Hey, decided to pop in here and do another live video on this start of a painting that I'm doing. As probably a lot of you know, I'm an encaustic artist. This is Patricia Baldwin Sugarbrook at the Encausta Castle. And um, uh, the way I start paintings more often than not is with an underpainting. And I've been outside pulling weeds and playing in the garden. So I thought that this was a good time to step inside and shift gear for a little, gears for a little while, and burn my nose. The underpainting kind of just gives it some, somewhere to start. Y'all, if you're artists and watching this, you know what that means. You know what that sensation is to start something and um, not know intuitively where you're going, but let those intuitive um, prompts rise. This, this is an arrangement of some, some of the tools I'm gonna use to start this painting. This is a four by five birch panel. It's a very absorbent and of course rigid, which is great for encaustic. I'm using all, all my underlayment, this, this you know start foundation painting, are all absorbent materials. In other words, they'll still leave the absorbency in this wood that the encaustic needs in order to adhere. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna get started and play with it. And hopefully every day that I come to studio to work on this, I'll remember to turn this on and I'll share it with you as I proceed. I have an idea of, in terms of technique, where I wanna go with this. It's somewhere new that I haven't experimented with the play of materials before in this way. So whether I end there successfully or not will play out over time. I may, as often is the case, take a, bend, a turn in the road, take a fork in the road and end up in a completely different place. But that's why I'm doing this. It's like, why not now? The time is now. I'll go share this, what the heck? So here I am. I probably won't talk through this too much except to explain what materials I'm using, but for four, the next five, 10 minutes, I'm just gonna show you how I would lay down my first um, inspiration, intuitive response to the board and get this going. I apologize for my tripod leg in this screen. If somebody is really good with all these tools and stuff and wants to tell me how to better set up my tripod, I'm all for it, but I could not figure out how to get the leg out of the, out of the screen. <laughs> I need to hang it above me. There we go. I don't even know that this is recording because I have it so high on this 4x5 board. I'll just hope. Actually, I'm going to peek and then I'll get started and tell you all these materials I am using. Climb my chair to the top. And, oh, yes. Hi, everybody. It is working. All right. I'll keep going. <laughs> so first and foremost, RNF encaustic gesso. It's great for a good ground. I don't necessarily need a ground. I paint encaustic directly on board. I do not need a ground first, but it gives it a, a white behind adding in the encaustic painting. Um, and I manipulate it a little bit. So I'm not going to start there. I'll put it aside for a moment. Come back to that. These pots, yogurt cups I have going, are milk paint. I've really enjoyed using this material. It's a limestone based material. So there's an absorbency in it. In it. It's got that lime going on. This particular one I've had forever. I don't even know where I got it, but there you go. Old fashioned milk paint. So that's what I'm using here. I oftentimes will just start with three colors because you know, I'm not going in any direction. They may or may not show through at the end of time, <laughs> at the end of the painting or not. It's just, obviously this is what I have. I don't have all kinds of milk paint, just these three colors in a white. Um, but you know, they'll, they'll feed the painting. And then in addition, whatever I can get my hands on to mark make. Good old pencil, love, love, love. My charcoals, what are those called? Derwent's XLs, yeah. Another great graphite pencil. This is um, graphite, yeah, it's graphite and it's water soluble. So when I come in with the, the wet materials, it will leach, bleed into it. These are Derwent's ink tints, which are beautiful on the surface of a board too. I use them as if a crayon, um, but if you're not familiar with them, they can be painted with. Use a little water and they paint, and, and it's a permanent, it's an ink, and then charcoals. So that's what I've selected from all my stuff, and I'm just going to begin. 
I've not done this before. I've never really begun an intentional painting because it is such an intuitive process for me. I go deep into this bye-bye place and disappear when I'm painting, um, other than demonstrating, of course. So this being an intentional painting, I need to go to that bye-bye place, but I'm doing it as a demo. So it's gonna be a little different. I will just begin. I need to chop my brushes or lean them. All right. It's a little thick, but I'm gonna leave it that way because I'm not gonna go into the kitchen and add water while I've got you guys on. Love that color. Yellow is one of my favorite. Of course, this is gold, yellow, but we all get the idea. walk around the entire table to get at this, but we'll see where it goes. I do that when I'm working with the encaustic. I don't think my palettes are in view, but I've got two palettes at the end of the table, so I'm constantly moving around the entire table when I am using the encaustic, so it might have to happen, happen here as well, but maybe I'll just throw it. <laughs> Respond. I'm not sure I like this red at all. Very true brick color. Let's make mud out of it. All right. Well, if you're not liking it, I'm putting a lot down. And that's going to get mixed with something for sure. No, none of this is new to any of you, and um, it's not meant as a as an instructional as much as something else to train your eyes to and hang out with for a little while. So I'm glad you're along. Share my space. Try myself at um, like I said, doing this intuitive painting that happens so much in solitary, but yeah, now has an audience. <laughs> I don't worry about it being ugly at this point, which this is, this is going there pretty fast. <laughs> um, because there's so many different ways that I'll be able to respond to this as the layers progress. And I'm coming in with that encaustic gesso. And it, of course, is going to pick up all those under layers and become a delicious color. Well, one hopes. Add deliciousness. That red's going to be a lot better with white in there. Inexpensive foam brush is just fine for this process. I don't get crazy with my brushes that are gonna need to be washed or cleaned. I like to, I put this actually in a, in a used rubber glove and just let it hang out until I use it again. And then when it wears out, it'll go bye-bye. I don't wash these all out. I'm gonna move y'all. It's gonna bother me to work around my tripod leg. All right. Well, not all right. One more bit here. This is about all I would do in my foundation. I just like to get, what do I wanna call this? A center. That's what's felt good to me lately is to give it this central focus, I guess. But I'm gonna show you what else I do. Um, I don't have my mask on, I usually wear a mask. I've got my fan blowing away from me at the moment, so I mix in dry pigment straight into my encaustic gesso on the foundation if I want more of a 
of a toned white going on for a color in the foundation if I hadn't used that milk paint first. So those are fun as well. I don't really want all that much, but I wanted to show you that's something else that I do to start paintings, or I'm going to do to start this painting. Thanks so much for not talking much, huh? mess at this point. I don't feel so ooh, ugly about it as I did on my first run layer. This is that same Derwent XL in white charcoal. change up in, change up in um, line width. I'm coming in with little heads. Again, there's a very, very, very good chance that none of this will show when I'm done with the painting, but there's something to be said for starting strong in anything, and that's true of a painting as well. So if I re really resonate with the emotional response to this first layer, I'm going to stand a better chance of loving it at every stage of the game. There'll be struggles, but I'll love it so much that you know, continuation will be much more possible than if I'd left it at that point where I looked at it a few layers ago and thought, oh my god, that is so ugly. If I left it there, it would be really hard for me to continue processing um, delight and um, anticipation through the process. If if I'd gone into it, kept going into it with that, ooh, it's so ugly, starting layer. So again, something to be said for starting strong, or at least liking it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna leave it at that, let it dry, go back outside and play with my doggy Quinn, and I will come at you guys, I was gonna say tomorrow, but hopefully my husband's coming home, so maybe in a few days. Next time I'm here is when I'll come at you. Thanks for coming along. Patricia Baldwin Sakerberg from the Encosta Castle. Over and out, everybody. Sorry if you asked any questions while watching. I'm not watching my screen, so I couldn't answer anything. But I'll be back at you. Thanks for being here. <laughs>